Hi guys, today I want to talk a little bit about my mental health as a mum and the things that I've experienced since having children in terms of mental health. It's not something I talk about a lot. I tend to deal with these things myself and I internalise a lot of it, but I do know that it's not that healthy to keep everything in and I often find that I feel much better once I talk about these things. I found that when I had my ectopic pregnancy, which I kept to myself for a really long time, I just didn't want to deal with it. And once I spoke about it, I felt a lot better. So I think it's time for me to kind of address a couple of mental health issues that I've had. And just before I get into the video, I wanna say that I feel like my case is a very minor case, but I don't think that because you've got a minor case of something, maybe depression, anxiety, whatever it is, that it shouldn't be treated seriously. Everybody has struggles and everybody deals with problems and I don't think there's any point in saying that one problem is bigger than the other just because someone has got a more severe case. I think if you feel that you have some kind of mental health issue, don't feel like, oh, because it's only minor, it's not worth looking into it, I'll just brush it under the carpet and get on with it. I feel like you need to look after yourself. And the, the old saying comes back to mind, you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't give your ma maximum to your children. You can't be the best mum, the best parent you can be without looking after yourself first. And that's something that I've learned over the last two and a half years of being a mum. And if you feel like you're feeling a little bit down and you just don't know, if you've got that niggly feeling in your mind that something is just not right, um, Channel Mum has an amazing page full of help and um, just topics and discussion and videos all about mental health as a mum. So if you want to have a look, I'll leave a link below. I'm not sponsored to say any of these things. I know a lot of people are seeing these videos come up, but it's just because it's the, the topic of the month for Channel Mum and it's nice raising awareness. I think as a mum, I'd like to know that things exist things like this exist out there and that they can be helpful to other mums. So if you want to check it out, if you feel like you're a bit sort of not feeling great, um, go over to the link that I put on the description below and just have a look. Have a look at the videos, have a look at the topics and see if any of this is helpful to you. But now I'm going to talk about um, my story with anxiety and stress. Anxiety is a word that it's used a lot amongst I say amongst the YouTube community, not just the parenting community, and it almost seems like cliche, and that's why I've felt so reluctant to talk about it, because I don't want it to be like, oh, another one that has anxiety, oh, another one that's, you know, it. it's a shame that it's becoming that kind of topic, but it is, and it's very, very unfortunate because it's making people not want to talk about their anxiety, like people like me feeling that like they're going to be labeled and put in the same category like all the people all these youtubers with anxiety are coming out now and that just makes my heart ache to feel like such an important topic is being treated like a label right so i'm just having to improvise because isabella is awake now i try and keep her entertained with some banana wafers and hopefully i can film this video so i'm really sorry about the distraction. I know a lot of you will be distracted by her here. Even I am distracted by her. Um, but that's the only way I can film this video today. So I'm going to be talking about my triggers, um, a few things that I do to make myself feel better and what I'm like when I feel those two things. Of course, stress and anxiety are two different things and they affect me differently. I felt that I had a lot of anxiety when I had James and with Isabella and James together now I have a lot more stress and obviously mummy life is stressful. You know, there's a lot to be done. We're responsible for two human beings. Up to a certain point I never felt like those things were affecting my mental health. I felt like I'd feel stressed and then things would calm down and I'd go back to normal. But I went through a really tough period and I, I think I'm still kind of going through it. I'm just on, on the way out um, of stress. 
Uh, I'll talk about the anxiety later, but I'll talk about the stress first. So one of the biggest triggers for me for stress is feeling unorganized, feeling like I'm completely out of control of my life and my time and the house and things just snowball and it becomes a total and absolute chaos. More in my mind than in real life. I, yeah, I do think that it's more, the chaos is more in my mind because Matthew, my husband, reacts to this same situation differently to me. And that's how I know that I, I have a certain problem with stress, is that we're both dealing with the same things, yet he's coping and I'm struggling. So something must be imbalanced there. So that's one of the main triggers, is feeling unorganized. And it's it's suddenly, it's almost like a kettle boiling, you know, the living room is a huge mess there is a pile of dishes to be washed the laundry is huge and the ironing pile is just as high and then the, that kettle is boiling I've got deadlines for work and the kettle it keeps going higher and higher and higher the kids are screaming they won't nap they won't eat and suddenly all of that boils and then I explode I get very snappy I kind of take it out on the people that are not at fault, usually Matthew, bless him. It affects my mood, it affects the kids, it affects my life and it just generally makes me feel like I can't do this, I can't cope. When things are getting really stressful, instead of going completely out of control and, you know, freaking out, I freeze and I do nothing and it's like I'm paralyzed, you know, there's a huge pile of laundry to wash and I walk past it all day long, I see it and I do nothing about it and I just keep getting further down and down and down about it and it, oh, it's horrible. If you struggle with it, you'll know what I mean. Living in chaos, which is a part of having children and young children, is a massive trigger for stress for me. The second trigger is being on my own with both kids. And you would have thought, what are you going on about? You chose to have children. You need to be able to handle them both on your own. But that's a massive trigger for stress for me. Again, I think it's that whole being out of control thing because I know that if I need to put Isabella down for a nap, I don't have anyone to look after James. James might wake, might wake Isabella just as I'm about to take her up the stairs. They both might need me at the same time. I won't be able to tend to their needs and make them both feel like they have what they want from me. And that is a huge, huge trigger for me. I know a lot of people are not lucky to have people around to help them. And I really do feel for you because I this time around, when Isabella came along, we've had a lot of help from family. And I still feel like when I don't have anyone to help me sort of at bedtime to put the two of them to sleep, I feel like the world is gonna fall apart. And it's not a nice feeling at all. <laughs> you okay there? Yeah. <laughs> so how does stress affect me in my life? Like I said before, I get very moody and snappy at people. Um, I blame people for things that they have no blame for. And I kind of try to carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. I take on all the responsibilities and I it's kind of my way of trying to take control of a situation that's out of control and that's making me feel out of control, which obviously doesn't help because um, I can't do everything by myself and I'm not superwoman. And then that only contributes to me, me feeling more out of control, more inadequate, and then feeling even more stressed. And that's how it affects me the most. But there are a couple of things that I've found that have helped me deal with my stress a lot better. The first thing is not something that I would ever have thought that would have any effect in my mental health and me feeling better in terms of stress is reducing the amount of coffee I drink. <laughs> and that might sound ridiculous and it to me still sounds ridiculous, but it has had a very positive impact in my life. Not that coffee reduces stress, but coffee makes me very hyper and very sort of, you know, like, what coffee should do, wake you up and, you know, get your heartbeat accelerated and all of those things. But it has a, a negative impact on my stress because it does no nothing for helping me calm down, chill out, deep breath and all of that. So 
I've had to cut down coffee, unfortunately. Um, I'm only drinking decaf at the moment and I feel like my levels of uncontrollable stress have improved a lot. So coffee is the one thing that is not helping my stress. The second thing that helps is deep breaths. If the living room is causing me stress, I'll quickly nip into the kitchen, I'll put the baby in the, in the jumper room just so that she's safe, I'll give James the iPad so that I know that he's safe, and I'll quickly step into the kitchen or whatever room is not causing me stress, and I will take a deep breath, look around me and know everything will be okay. The third thing that helps me is taking one step at a time, tackling one task at a time. If everything is a mess, I won't be able to get everything done at once. It's just not humanly possible, but I will be able to get everything done one thing at a time. And if I focus on one task and get that done, it immediately helps improve and kind of counteract my stress. So the living room is a mess. There's a pile of laundry. I'll focus on one thing. Let's get the pile of laundry down and then that will be one less thing on my list. And the last thing that helps me deal with my stress is asking myself this question. Can this problem be solved in any way? If the answer is yes, then it's pointless me banging on and worrying about it so much to the point that it's causing me to feel the physical effects of stress. If it's like worrying whether or not we should do a food shop before collecting James from playgroup or you know doing it the other way around you know it's just not worth it just relax do whatever whatever will be done and it doesn't matter that is basically what I do kind of like a mental exercise to help me with my stress now in terms of my anxiety the biggest trigger for me is leaving my children even with Matthew with anyone I I struggle a lot and I start to feel like I want to cancel everything and I don't want to do what I was meant to be doing because I've got to leave them and they won't cope and I won't cope and I won't know what's going on and that started when I had James. I could not bring myself to leave him with anyone. So that's the biggest trigger for anxiety for me and the way that it affects my life is that I stop myself from doing certain things because the anxiety takes over and it tells me, no, it will be too hard, it will be too difficult, you can't do this. The number of times that I booked to go to events and I get all excited about it and I book train and I booked everything, taxis, <coughs> confirmed my attendance and the last minute I kind of go, I can't do it. I just can't do it. The anxiety takes <laughs> The anxiety takes over and it kind of tells me that things are not going to work without me and that I've got to give up what I'm doing in order for things to work. This might sound crazy, but this is what goes through my mind when I'm having one of those anxiety moments. For example, if Matthew is looking after the kids and I've got to go somewhere for the day and leave the kids with him, my brain thinks, how, how is he going to know that Isabella likes to have her back rubbed when she goes down for a nap? How is he going to know that she has three or four bottles a day but that's not set in stone? If she doesn't have the fourth, it's not a problem as long as she gets enough solids. How um, is he going to cope if he needs to put Isabella for a sleep and James is awake? How is he going to know that James likes to play with the colours yellow and red more? And this is ridiculous because Matthew is the father of the kids. He knows as much about them as I do. But because of the anxiety, my brain thinks that no, that that's not going to happen. It's not going to. It's not going to go well. And basically, I convince myself that it's better off if I stay. At least things will go as usual, and nothing will be disrupted. Which is not a way to live. I know that, and I'm trying to get better at that. I'm trying to convince myself that I need to do these things, and I need to be able to say yes to more things, more opportunities in my life. If my children are safe, which they will always be, I will never leave them if they are not gonna be safe. If they're safe, if they're happy, then there's no need for me to worry so much about what ifs and what could happen and what's gonna happen. It's only natural, I think, as mums that we worry, but to worry to the point of stopping yourself from doing these things, it becomes not normal. And that's when I realized that I had these problems um, 
in that my mental health was affected. And I, I didn't want it to be a stigma in my life. I knew that the moment I admitted it, that I would never go back to not having these issues. Once you have them, you'll always have them. You just have to learn how to manage them. And I think that's why I was in denial for a lo the longest time. I felt like I was gonna be seen and judged as someone who can't cope, someone who's weaker, and sometimes even not capable of looking after my own children. But that's not true at all and I've not found that to be true at all since I've admitted to myself. I've not gone into any counselling or anything, like I said before. I kind of internalise a lot of things and I deal with it myself. But if it gets to a point where I feel like I can't handle this, I will definitely, definitely look for help, speak to my GP or my health visitor because I feel like it's a very important issue and I need to be at my best in order to look after my kids well and to give them everything that they deserve to have in life and that's why I feel like these issues have been only ever so slightly minor but not unimportant if you know what I mean. I have to constantly reaffirm and remind myself that happiness is a choice and when I'm feeling very stressed and very anxious I tend to let these things dictate my ha happiness and feel like I'm not happy because I haven't been able to do work, I'm not happy because the house is a mess, I'm not happy because of this and that. Happiness is not a destination, it's a choice and I can choose to be happy and deal with things differently. I'm feeling a bit nervous about putting this all out there because it's different when you've been through it and you're talking about a time in your life when you were stressed and you had a bit of anxiety but now you're over it but I feel like I'm not quite over it yet I'm just going through it and I'm kind of seeing the end of it um, so I feel quite nervous about putting it out there because it's like saying I'm struggling a little bit you know I am not doing as amazingly as some people might think I am you know and I think that's fine. I think you guys will understand and I hope you will. And if you're feeling like I'm feeling or if you have feelings similar to mine, please look at the Channel Mom page and have a look at the videos, see if they help you. Leave a comment below, tell me how you're feeling and what are the triggers for you and what you do to make yourself feel better. And I hope this wasn't too distracting having Isabella here chatting away. It's another thing that I'm trying to do is be a bit more zen about the things that go wrong in my life. Not in my life in general, but like I had planned to make this video without a baby, which is why I planned to do it while she was napping, but then she woke up. And so I'm trying to be a bit more zen as before. This would have stressed me out so much to the point where it would have ruined my day. But it hasn't. It hasn't because it's not her fault, it's no one's fault. And she's been, pardon me, she's been such a darling, so yeah. Thank you for watching this video. Be kind in the comments and give it a like if you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. If you have mum friends who like watching YouTube videos, tell them about my channel, they might like it as well. I feel a bit sort of embarrassed, like plugging my old channel, but. So yeah, I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs> You're a good girl.